He's a columnist for Tablet Magazine and author of the New York Times bestselling book, Secret City, The Hidden History of Gay Washington, James Kerchick. Jamie, good to see you. And she's a co-host of two podcasts, Breaking Points with Crystal and Cigar and Crystal Kale, Kale, Kyle, sorry, you know and it. Friends. <laughs> I'm bad at names. Crystal Ball is over here. Crystal Ball. All right. So I'm going to talk about the hearings again at first because I know we talked about it last week, but I don't care. It's the big, I, I still don't think people understand how giant this thing is. And to me, the headline was... They knew it. They all knew what they were doing was wrong, and they did it anyway. And here's the stat. 54% of people now in this country, people, the people, remember them? Because I don't trust the majority of the people. The people, remember them? Think Trump should be charged with a crime, including 20... One guy in our audience does. <laughs> so that's another one. And including 21 percent of republicans think he should be charged with the crime i don't even know what we're doing this for if he's not uh so the question that's in my mind is gosh if we only had some sort of justice department mm. uh, but the committee says they will not refer this to the justice department why why isn't it moving into that realm and if we don't it'll just happen again no I think that there is a fundamental lack of seriousness from the Democrats when it comes to solving the problems, not only that led us to January 6th, which I actually think is the deeper issue and the deeper question here, how did we get to a place where a good percentage of the country is convinced the election was stolen, where they would listen to this maniac, where they actually think that they're patriots storming the Capitol to restore democracy. How did we get there? And then you can see that they're not actually serious about how existential this threat is by okay. the fact that they are propping up candidates who believe this nonsense. I mean, in Pennsylvania, right. this is what's actually really scares me. But that's me. not really my question. I mean, yes, if a guy robs a liquor store, let's look into why he did that. But also, he needs to be arrested for robbing the liquor store. <laughs> let's well, look into why. What was in his mind, and like he was yeah. poor, okay. and yes, well, you could understand really the consequences of this. And I think that Donald Trump is a menace, and he may have committed crimes. And this is our periodical reminder, periodic reminder that we don't like Trump. But let's think about the consequences of prosecuting a former president who might run again. You know, oh. Gerald Ford. I'm not saying Gerald Ford in 1975. You know, after what 74 um, in the Watergate crisis. He did the right thing by pardoning Richard Nixon. You know, that was a long national nightmare, and it ended. But, and I don't, and I, and I, I just think we Nixon have to be very did, careful about, about how we approach this. Nixon did not try to undermine democracy itself. I object to the votes from the state of Wisconsin, which were not, should not be legally no certified. No debate. Mr. President, I object to the certificate from the state of Georgia on the grounds that the electoral votes no, were no not. No debate. There's no debate. And I object to the certificate. Uh, from the state of North Carolina. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina. I object to the certificate from the state of Alabama. The electors were not lawfully certified. He, well, he, he was breaking the law. He, yes, he bro Trump broke I mean, the law. Here's a couple of things. So first of all, I, I actually have That's no issue with Trump, Trump being prosecuted. And this is our periodical reminder, periodic reminder that we don't like Trump. And I have a lot of issue with elites being left unaccountable for the crimes that they commit, number one. Number two, that's not going to solve our problem. Do you think that Ron DeSantis is going to be way better than Donald Trump? Yes. He's, I mean, not, gonna my issue. he's not going to be the enemy yes, of I democracy do. in the same I, way I'd that like Trump to answer is. that. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't know how you can say that. <laughs> because he's clearly modeled himself in the footsteps of Donald Trump. Ron, I mean, you see the way that these people shown, all He hasn't shown contempt for democratic, he hasn't shown contempt for democratic he's, processes. He's like not Trump certifiably insane. That too. That's a that great too. one to start <laughs> off with. Uh, you know what Ron DeSantis won't be doing? He won't be uh, poop tweeting every day. He won't be like having feuds with Bette Midler on Twitter. He's not an insane person. So if Trump were to continue all of the policies that he currently is, but comport himself 
differently. Would that make a big difference to you? Yeah, actually and, it would. See, the truth is it exactly. really would. <laughs> so that just shows you that it's an aesthetic critique. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the underlying ideas or the policies or the orientation of it. And it's exactly that that shows you the hollowness of Biden's campaign himself. It's just like, I will act like a president. Now look, a lot of people want that in this country. I don't want to like dismiss that. I, I think it's stupid, but aesthetics, look, you know, it, it does matter. It's, like it's like a comfort sort of yes. thing. Like this looks and feels the way that I expect it right. to look and feel. You have to ask yourself the question, Bill, how did we get to this place? <sighs> Why can't we figure this out? Well, we just Trump went through that. A, Trump is a symptom of a deep rot but in our society. He also January committed the crime. Symptom yeah. He robbed the liquor store. That's fine. That's, like, can we question, just... How do we, how do, okay. if we actually care about these restoring are, democracy, let, how do we do that? These, are, these okay. aren't mutually exclusive. We can address the underlying causes that led to Trump. And if necessary, prosecute him for what he did. I'm, okay. I'm, I remain unconvinced that that's necessary, this, but there are two separate but if, things. But if your question is why aren't Democrats doing that, I think they're not fundamentally serious about this because yes. you see the way that they're propping up well, but candidates who are, you know, this, all in nut jobs, you know, this as, argument as they that, can be. that you're making that we can't prosecute this guy for this serious crime that he committed because it would spark unrest or something. Uh, that's a very dangerous road to go down, and it's very faint-hearted, I think, and pusillanimous. I think using the but Justice Department, we have to be scared of what the criminals will do if we charge them with being it's criminals. The, the that can't. That's not really the I've, way to go. I've, I've covered, you know, banana republic-type countries. Well, now this is one. Well, there are there are a lot of banana republicans. This is true. In in our country. But using the justice system to prosecute your, your political enemies. So what exactly is fascism? It's a very, but it's a they're very not, tricky... But they're not, it's not a political system P problem. It's, it's whatever party did this, I would be saying the same thing. That was bullshit. What if, what if somebody like Erdogan in Turkey did this? What if we were reading about Erdogan and we knew that he had threatened the life of his own vice president in that country? What if we knew that that vice president of Turkey had to be shuffled underground for five hours because the mob was after him? What if we found out that he called up the state of Anatolia and said to the governor, I need you to find 11,000 votes in your state so that I can win this election? What if uh, C-A-T really spelled dog? Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's heavy, Ogre. What, what would we be writing and thinking about Erdogan or the guy in the Philippines or anywhere who did things like the this? The State Department would be condemning it. Sure. What if yeah. he? What if that guy still hadn't conceded the election as Trump still hasn't conceded yeah. the last election? Yeah. What I mean, would we be saying? I think you're a hundred percent correct that. Oh, good. <laughs> look, people should who commit crimes should be charged with crimes. I just think it's a little delusional to oh, think great. that's going to fix the problem. Which, because to charge him with a crime? I mean, I, how do we? How does that fix the core problem of the <laughs> rot in our society? Any, that's any that's right, but that's the what justice I'm saying. I, I'm just saying. Look, it's not a magic bullet. Here. Why would we have to delve into how we got to this place in the first place? See the same energy that's being applied to the January 6th commission. I'd love to see that energy to say the people who have rigged our system, the monopolists, but the price gougers, try, the Wall okay, Street okay. ghouls. Where is that okay. energy as well? Right. Okay. Well, th that you're right. That should be in the mix too. But your premise here that why should we prosecute people for crimes? I didn't what would say that we shouldn't prosecute them. No, I said you that, said, what don't, will that don't do? Don't think that that's going to solve the fundamental problem in our Would society. Would you say that about uh, uh, criminal justice in general? Of course, sure, yeah. That it doesn't this solve is, the problem? This is a symptom, of course, yes. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? It doesn't. That, that is dealing with a symptom. Arresting of criminals the rot in and our putting society. them in jail I mean, does not help the problem massive, of crime? We have this. She should run for DA in San Francisco. I, I, <laughs>
was, uh, to look at everything going on in society today <laughs> and say that All right. oh, it's just Trump. And if we just get Trump out of the way, everything okay. will be fine. Now, well, we should. Is, does anyone have a doubt that he would do it again? Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. One of the people who testified this week is Michael Ludwig, Michael Slow Talker Ludwig. <laughs> That's unfair. He, well, he does talk slow. Um, he said Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. He said not because of what they did, although that's true and they should be prosecuted and prosecution does stop crime. But because they're going to do it again. Does anyone have any doubt that Trump, should he run, and he will, yeah. if he lost, and he very well might, would do this again? No. What the hell did you just say? We'd do this again. No. We'd do this again. No. We'd do this again. No. And it's no, deep, no doubt. What's deeply concerning <laughs> is have you followed what's happening in Pennsylvania? So the guy who is the Republican nominee for governor. Uh, right. Mastriano, yes. who again, this is a guy Democrats ran ads for to help him in the primary, to help him get the Republican nomination because they thought he'd be easier to beat. Yep. Okay, in Pennsylvania, kind right. of an important state, right. he can appoint the Secretary of State. This was a guy who was so intimate in the sort of election insanity in Pennsylvania, he's coming up in the January 6th testimony, he was at the Capitol on January 6th. <laughs> And this is a guy who now in the latest polls within the margin of error. So I think it's incredibly important to take these things seriously. I just don't happen to think that only dealing with the symptoms of what happened on January well, I, 6th and even just removing Trump is going to solve those look, underlying issues. We're I in a very have, chaotic and scary I moment have said right now. For years, you can hate Trump. You can't hate the people who like him. Holy mud holes, Batman. We're lost in the middle of a murky swamp. Yeah. Because it's yes. half the country. And I'll give you yes. an example of where I'm probably with you on something this week. There was a football coach. His name is Jack Del Rio. Okay? And he called the January 6th riot a dust-up. I'm just expressing myself. And uh, I think we all as Americans have the right to express ourselves. Especially if you're being respectful. I'm being respectful. I just asked a simple question. Really, did I... It, let's get right down, down to it. What did I ask? A simple question. Why are we not looking into those things? If we're going to talk about it. Why are we not looking into those things? Because it's kind of hard for me to say I can realistically look at it. I see the images on TV. People's livelihoods are being destroyed. Businesses are being burned down. No problem. And then we have a dust up at the Capitol. Well, there's no nothing burned down. And we're not going to talk about, we're going to make that a major deal. I just think it's kind of two standards. And if we apply the same standard and we're going to be reasonable with each other, let's have a discussion. That's all it was. Let's have a discussion. We're Americans. Let's talk it through. I'm for, I'm for us, you know, having a great opportunity to have a fulfilled life. Uh, like I said, every, way, every which way I can, when I'm here, it's about love and respect. I love my guys, I respect my guys, uh, but I also love the fact that I'm an American and that means I'm free to express myself, and I'm not afraid to do that. Now, this is a very common view that he has. I would like to, if I could talk to Mr. Del Rio, I think I could probably, hopefully, convince him a little bit that it was more than a dust-up. He also compares it a lot to the 2020 protests mm -hmm. that were going on after the George Floyd yeah. murder. Okay, I think I could also convince him there are really important differences between those two things and actually the attack on the capitol was worse nevertheless he has a right to be wrong yes in america you have the right to be wrong yeah. they find him the team find him a hundred thousand dollars for this opinion finding people for an opinion i am not down with that and here's what the coach of the team said this is his you know his assistant coach so his boss said about the guy who got fined he does have the right to voice his opinion as a citizen of the United States, and it most certainly is his constitutional right to do so. Apparently not. There'll be no more debating. You know what? This is the don't pee on my shoe and tell me it's raining. What the fuck are you talking about? He doesn't have a right to opinion, and it's obviously not his right to do so.
silence, or I'll have you in contempt of court. Yeah, so I... either say you're against free speech, but don't tell me this. No, it's absurd, and he should be allowed to express his opinion, and people should be allowed to criticize him for people it. People can and... have shitty takes. Yeah. You know, it's not a crime <laughs> it's... to have a shitty take. To have a shitty take <laughs> is not a crime. I, mean... I call it the trial of the super friends. You know, there's a backdrop there, too, at the um, the Washington football team. What are they? The commanders, commanders now. Commanders, right. Um, they have, they've been under investigation for, you know, sexual harassment, rampant, all the way up to Dan Snyder. So I also think this is a little bit of virtue signaling on their part there's, as they come under scrutiny for those things. There's another sports story that is a little bit of virtue signaling. It's uh, Pride Month. Yep. I think five. Uh, is, it, is it really Pride Month? I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, what is this Pride Month you're talking about? I'm going to leave it to you to explain. <laughs> Um, so the Tampa Bay Rays baseball yep. team, uh, they had the pride, I think the rainbow, the rainbow, attached to their uniforms for the whole month. There are five or six pitchers, I think they're all pitchers, on the team who did not want to wear it. Yep. Uh, they gave a religious reason, which is sincere, you know, me with religion. I mean, I think it's super stupid. Come on. God had a son. I mean, time out, right? There, God had a son? He's powerful beyond all imagination? He exists in a realm above time and space, but he has kids? <laughs> what is this, Bonanza? He has a son. <laughs> God had a son, and he said to him, Jesus, <laughs> I'm sending you down to Earth on a suicide mission. <laughs> but don't worry, they can't kill you because you're really me. But, okay, you know what? For some reason, religions have a real thing about fucking in the naughty place. They just don't... They're all, you know, it's just... <laughs> it's funny, they all do it on the sly, but they fucking hate it. You know, it's, me thinks thou doth protest too much. It is one of the silliest stories I've ever heard, but I don't mean to offend. Anyway, for whatever reason, I'm not sympathetic to the religion aspect. I am sympathetic to the idea of stop making me do things your way. Yeah. You know what? It reminds me of Mean Girls. In the high we all wear pink on Wednesday. Well, I don't, okay? You know what it is? This is actually life imitating Seinfeld when Kramer didn't want to wear the AIDS ribbon. Uh, uh, Cosmo Kramer. Uh, okay, you're checked in. Yeah, thank you. Here's your AIDS ribbon. Uh, no, thanks. You don't want to wear an AIDS ribbon? Uh, no, no. But you have to wear an AIDS ribbon. I have to? Yes. Yeah, see, that's why I don't want to. But everyone wears the ribbon. You must wear the ribbon. What you are? You're a ribbon bully. Hey! Hey, you! Come back here! Come back here and put this on! I mean, they're... Oh, they're, oh yeah. And... <laughs> Wait. So what was... They're forcing him... What happened in that one? Hey, where's your ribbon? Oh, I don't wear them. You don't wear the ribbon? Aren't you against AIDS? Yeah, I'm against AIDS. I mean, I'm walking, aren't I? I just don't wear the ribbon. Who do you think you are? Put the ribbon on. Hey, Cedric, Bob, this guy won't wear a ribbon. Who? Who doesn't want to wear the ribbon? <laughs> Kramer's in the AIDS walk. And right. He, and they're asking him to wear the AIDS ribbon. He's happy to walk. He's happy to raise money right. for AIDS. He doesn't want to wear the ribbon. So, what's it going to be? Are you going to wear the ribbon? No, oh, never. But I'm wearing the ribbon. He's wearing the ribbon. We are yeah. all wearing the ribbon. So why aren't you going to wear the ribbon? This is America. I don't have to wear anything I don't want to wear. What are we going to do with him? I huh? guess we're just going to have to teach him to wear the ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> right. A bunch of guys, they corner him in an alley and they demand to know why he's not wearing the ribbon. God, Kramer? <laughs> Look at you. I told you. Up all night playing poker. Come on. Hey, where's your age ribbon? This is actually what's happening now right. in your life. And I just have to say, 
as an LGBTQ pl plus I plus person. And finally, I need you to recite the full sexuality acronym. Uh, L-G-B-T-Q-I-A-O-N-M-P-Z backslash question mark, greater than sign, less than sign, squiggly mark, a peace sign, at sign, hammer and sickle, poop emoji, and symbol for titanium. All right. <laughs> My self-worth is not dependent upon somebody else wearing a rainbow on their, on their shoulder patch. Right. And the whole point of the gay rights movement was to convince people and to persuade people that gay people deserved equal rights. And we did that. And now it's gone from persuasion to, co to coercion. Hey, you, come back here. Come back here and put this on. Making people bake cakes for a wedding, uh, making people d d demonstrate their support for the Gay Pride Month. This is absurd. Uh, we don't need this. We don't need this. Um, so, you know, he's calling himself Hunter's dad now. No. Uh, I'm just. <laughs> um, but there's whispers now that are getting louder and louder that he needs to say, I'm not running again. Why, why attack Sanders? Why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. Okay, I did my job. I removed the mm -hmm. queen from the board, or however chess works, but... So Trump Mike is kind of a drag queen type figure. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very camp. What a beautiful. He's a real camp. Yeah. <laughs> You're right on that. He's totally camp. He's totally it's camp. Very camp. With the hair. Oh, my and God. And spitting all that ridiculous, like, outrageous uh, comments all the time. A platinum bouffant yeah. like a diner waitress? He's basically the first gay president. We should be honest about it. Okay. Yeah. So glad you said it because I've been thinking it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the case is clear. Here's my question about Joe Biden for you two. Has he pandered to the far left, A, too much, B, <laughs> too little, not at all? Because uh, AOC would say not at all. Well, if you look Other people would say he pandered way too much to the far left. If far. you look at the trajectory of his presidency, at the beginning of his presidency, he did some of the things that myself as a person on the left would like him to see. He passes the COVID relief bill, and lo and behold, he had very high approval ratings. You're not always on the left. Then... I am on the left. Uh, I'm, just, a, I'm a Bernie the, Sanders left. There's the populist not, economic not, left, so, then there's the woke left. And these okay, are two okay. separate. Bingo! Bingo! Woo! I'm a, I'm a Bernie the, Sanders left. There's the no, populist not, economic left, so, then there's the woke left. And these okay. are two separate. Okay. In any case, let's talk about <laughs> what he's actually done. I've got to keep away from that android imposter. So in the beginning of the administration, he passes that very high approval rating, doing extraordinarily well. When he puts out the left agenda and the Build Back Better, and then it fails, and he stops delivering no, for the American people, explain, that's when he falls off. What do you mean off. by the left agenda and the Build Back Better? Well, oh, there's just, universal pre-K. It's okay. not everything that I would want. Right. No Medicare for all. There's no Green New Deal. Well, you had universal pre-K, you had affordable child care, you had elder care, you had an expansion of Medicare. You had things that would have delivered for the American people. That falls apart, partly because of Manchin, Cinema, Parliament, all of that. That falls apart. And since now, the American people are feeling incredible pain with inflation and gas prices and unable to put food on the table and put gas in the car, and he's basically seeded the ground and said, eh, there's not much I can do. I just hope the Fed gets this under control. Yeah, the approval ratings have fallen off a cliff. That has nothing to do with the left. I wish the left had more power. In fact, I think the left is the only part of the political spectrum that has offered anything to deal with inflation, <laughs> gas prices, and the current economic situation that doesn't just involve, hey, let's trigger a recession and kill people's wages. Well, I mean, part of this inflationary problem is because we put too much money into the economy. There's way too much government spending, and that's why we have inflation. So that's a large part of that. That is, um, it's that basic is, economics. And that is secondly, not basic economics. We had this thing called a pandemic. We had a supply.
supply chain crisis, okay. and oh, yeah, by the way, well, there's well, a war well, in Ukraine. It's a role. It's played so a role. So to act like the only reason okay. we have and you, problems and act, is because people got a little bit of money in their whoa, bank whoa, whoa, account whoa. is just not honest. And you, a little bit of money, they got more than we spent in World War II. So you but, act, don't act but like... Hold the on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Don't because act like, you said don't act. Don't act like we had to react to the pandemic exactly the way we did. We, hacked, we had to spend $6 okay, trillion but how did, about the on the trillions forever flu. that the Federal Reserve shot at Wall Street. For some reason, people don't what? get upset about that. Uh, how much and that that? fueled the trillions of dollars the Federal Reserve shot at Wall Street to shot. stop the stock market and the bond market. No one well, gets upset about that, uh, even though well, that was a massive factor in inflation. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean shot at Wall Street? Are you stupid or something? What are we talking about? That we're talking about buying assets, buying stocks, buying bonds, buying treasury bills when? so that they expand the balance this? sheet. This is during the crisis, the coronavirus crisis. When the stock market crashed, that is what the Fed did. They went into action. They shot but the trillions stock market of dollars. Didn't crash. <laughs> but the stock market didn't crash. The stock market didn't during now. Now it's they, crashing. It it's crash. crashing now. It crashed, and the Fed came in and backstopped it. That's what happened. What, it crashed, so and we never heard I'm about saying. it. No, it crashed. Go back and look at it. I think when, it when? fell off a cliff. When? The Treasury bond market stopped functioning, and the Fed took extraordinary action it's never taken in history. I don't somehow remember no one that. Gets upset. The first week of the someone pandemic. somehow nobody gets upset about the rich people who got tons of money and tons of support, oh, yeah. way more than working class people did. Sure but oh do. my God, people were able to feed their kids and they had a little bit of money in their bank accounts. It was the worst thing in the world. No. That is one small part of the inflation story. And is, by the way, not the only thing that we can deal with to get out of this mess. Gas, yeah, price, yeah. gas prices we can largely attribute to an administration that's been waging war on the fossil fuel industry. That's ridiculous. And now they drilled demand? more than ever. But I mean, that's a tough US, point. US, US production, no, no, no. okay, US production okay. is up. You clown. Well, it will be at record levels next year. Okay, well. The fossil fuel companies themselves are flush with cash, but will not invest in new drilling because they would rather give it to their okay, shareholders. Okay, right, That's wait, the truth of what's well. happening. Here's the, here's the truth. I mean, I just read it today. In 2020, Biden said no more drilling on federal lands. No more. Uh, no look, Keystone I'm, Pipeline. Yeah, no. Oh, okay, and I'm not full. And, and also and, and antagonizing I'm, Saudi Arabia. Oh, now he's going on. back to Saudi Arabia oh, hat in what, hand. What, 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 let, let us finish just oh, what we're right. saying. All right. And then you can shut up. Well, and. Can I ask another question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I saw Andrew Solomon this week was talking about if, okay, if Biden does step down. I wrote the bill on the environment. Why would I not be for it? <laughs> or say he's going to step down. Then the Democrats have, I mean, we've all noticed this, a problem, like, but who? Right. And he mentioned, who is there, Bill Clinton, who's going to come along? And I thought, okay, well, Clinton and Obama, obviously the last two successful Democrats. <laughs> is, is there a Bill Clinton or Barack Obama out there? Or is such a broadly centrist Democrat no longer even really possible? You think that's the center? This country didn't want those things. Well, this country didn't want to deregulate Wall Street, deregulate so he, telecom. I don't think it's what we... I don't think it's what we need. I'll I think you, it's I'll absolutely possible. And I think part of the problem is that there's a divide on the left in the Democratic Party between the people who want to win political power. Quick Robin, the bat resin. And the echo chamber in the media, in the academy, in the NGO sector, and the people on Twitter. And their interests are not the same. Right. So there's, right, so there's, the, there's the Democratic Party, which wants to win power. And then there are people who want to get clicks and they want to sell subscriptions and they want to you know bark likes, very loudly likes likes like me I and i'll just give you a, i'll give you a small example of this okay small examples. we yeah. know statistically we know that the vast majority of latinos and latinas do not like the term latinx right. it's been statistically proven vast majority. and yet and yet they persist 
They persist. Well, I can't open up the newspaper without seeing it. Or there's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez demanding that they continue using this term, which now we're seeing. Hispanics are now voting Republican. Look yes. at this woman who just won oh, in yes. Texas. Yes. Uh, the first Mexican-American woman no. is a Republican from a border district. And that's who's why married I, to a border I mean, agent. When you're, when you're losing, so they're actively alienating I, it's the so, country, it's and so they don't funny. care. You'll never catch us. Because the Republicans accuse the Democrats of being soft on immigration so you can get more of those Latino people here. Latinx. Right. And then they're voting for the other right. party. Well, I think it's really instructive what that woman ran on. She had great commercials. They were all about the economy right. and inflation. So yep. I don't see a lot of evidence that Democrats actually are all that committed to winning. I also have a mini rant about this because there are some politicians, including Democratic politicians, that rail against the term Latinx. Because if they were, they would be doing something to address people's economic situation, which people overwhelmingly say is what they care about going into this election. If you don't want to use it, no one's forcing you to. So that's why I said at the beginning about January 6th, good, let's have accountability, let's do that. But where's that energy for the Wall Street criminals? Gender is fluid. Language is fluid. Where's that energy for the monopolists who are price gouging people? People right now are using the E term as gender neutral in order to be as inclusive as possible. Where is that energy for it's delivery for people in the here and right now? We need it's to right see here. It. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tim. So Latine you avoid the masculine O, you avoid the feminine A. Latine, E, is a little more neutral, so it can be more inclusive to people. For example, saying nosotres.